Hi, I have some good news for you. Today we won't be talking about OPMs at all. Why you're wondering? Well, because I just couldn't fit them in this video. But what we'll talk about is how to convert this into something like this. Are you ready? Let's get rolling. Before I reveal the how, let's first discuss the why. The mains voltage is an AC voltage source. AC stands for alternating current. This means that the voltage is alternating between positive and negative sinusoidal pattern. Your phone, on the other hand, is a charged with a DC voltage. DC stands for direct current. This means that voltage is constant. Obviously, we need some sort of AC-DC converter. So this was the why part. Now let's move to the how. Last time we talked about diodes, those nifty little things that only conduct current in one direction. It shouldn't surprise you that they will be at the heart of AC-DC converter. Let's build a simple like rectifier with load and see what happens. Red PTIS output goes here, diode on the output, load it with a 1 kilo ohm resistor, connect the input probes and let's take a look at the scope. Set the function generator to output a sine wave and here we go. Unsurprisingly, the rectified output is a poor-looking imitation of positive half of the input signal. In spite of that, we are one step closer to having a DC voltage output. We only need to smooth out the output signal. How? By adding a capacitor in parallel to the load resistor like so. And BAM! The result is this. A DC-looking signal. We did it! Time to go home. And no, this video isn't long enough. Such AC-DC converter can be found in the cheapest devices. You could see that the output was really spiky before we added the smoothing capacitor. The capacitor had to do a lot of work to smooth out the dirty voltage, which reduces its life expectancy. Later, we'll talk about how to alleviate this problem. Right now, we'll talk about voltage levels. As stated before, mains voltage is a sine wave. It oscillates at 50 or 60 Hz, depending on where you live. In much the same way, amplitude also varies by region. In the States, they use 110 volts. In EU, we use 230 volts. Diode voltage drop is 0.7 volts, which is negligible in comparison. This means that filtered output voltage will be pretty much the same as input, only converted from AC to DC. But my phone gets charged from 5 volts. Is there a way to reduce the mains voltage before rectifying it? Back to the voltage level translations. Transformers. There are devices that accept AC voltage of a given amplitude in the primary winding and give out AC voltage of a different amplitude on the secondary winding. The factor by which amplitude is charged is set by ratio of windings on the primary and secondary side. This one right here is called HP1-1400L. You can find it in the analog devices kit, you know, the one we picked components for these videos. It has six equal windings that we are connected in any desired combination to create a custom transformer with desired characteristics. If you use one winding for the primary and two for the secondary, the output voltage will have double amplitude. Note that winding orientation is important. Their orientation is marked with a dot. 
If current on the primary is entering from the dot side, current on the secondary will also enter the winding on the dot side. Think of coil polarity as a polarity in batteries. Real power supplies use transformer to drop the main voltage from uh, 230 volts to something more manageable. But what we'll do, we use a transformer to increase red pitaya's output voltage. This way, the diode drop will have lesser effect on the system. Let's make such a circuit. You can look at the data sheet of this transformer and wire it up yourself or you can just stop the video and recreate the circuit. If you find it far to follow or see, you can always take a look at the accompanying documentation. Before we can see how it's working, we need to increase the sinus frequency. Common transformers have a high enough inductance to work with 50 Hz, but this one requires something greater. Here, as promised, 1 volt input is transformed into 5 volts. Now that we know how to set the voltage, let's talk about how to make a rectifier voltage easier to smooth. Let's take a half wave rectifier from the beginning of the video and make a full wave rectifier. It looks like this. When input voltage is positive, current flow like so. Remember, diodes only conduct in forward direction. Negative input voltage will result in such current flow. Does it work? Of course it does. But let's check how exactly. To keep this video short, I prepared the circuit in advance. Mm -hmm. Let's just observe the voltage on the secondary winding of the transformer and the output of the full bridge rectifier. We can see that the negative halfway is mirrored over the positive side. Both halfways have their amplitude cut by voltage drops about 1.4 volts when compared to the input of the full wave rectifier. Let's also smooth out the voltage by adding a smoothing capacitor to the output. This is with the 10 nanofarad capacitor. And this with the 47 microfarad capacitor. Ignore the input voltage shape change. This is because red pitaya's output is getting overloaded. In any case, you can see that the output voltage is now a DC source. So that is the quick intro to the full wave rectifiers and how to use them. What we described in this video is usually used at the beginning of the AC-DC power supplies. With that said, I hope you learned something and the usual farewell is uh, like, share and subscribe. Bye-bye.